I hope you will be absolutely blessed by the content you're about to view. I would encourage you to get anyone and everyone who loves the truth above opinions of men, above tradition, above what you have been used to. Let's see the heart of the Father as we delve into matters of divorce from perspectives you likely have not heard before. Let's look at the evidence from multiple witnesses provided in the scripture and come to your own conclusions as to what you can and should believe about divorcees, marriage and remarried. I trust that the Lord will use the truth to set someone free to accomplish purpose and destiny while strengthening us in doing everything that is right and good. Please like, subscribe, and share. God bless you. You come across the person who has had a divorce because of the hardness of his heart or her heart. You do not tell that person, hey, you know, you have to end this relationship you're in now. Or God can forgive you. You are living in adultery. This is the teaching. Yes. Question if if it's right. The book of John chapter 4. Let me read from 16. It's a woman by the well in the nation or the city of Samaria. Jesus told her, go call your husband and come back. I have no husband. The woman replied. Jesus said to her, you are correct to say you have no husband. In fact, you have had five husbands. And the man you now have is not your husband. Hmm. You have spoken truthfully. What did Jesus send her to do? Go and call your husband and come back. Which one, sir? Even if it was among the five. So she had five that she was married to and this one that she wasn't even married to. So she's dealing with six men. This is the person Jesus waits behind to give the gospel. This this is not a divorcee. This is a divorcee general. This is... <laughs> This is the this is a field marshal of divorce. <laughs> we are reading together. Hmm. You know. It says the man you have now is not yours. You have had five men. And it's translated husband. And there's a distinction between those five and the one she's presently living with. There's a difference between them. Why the difference? Because likely she married the first five lawfully. Maybe they died, which would be terrible. Or maybe she divorced them. All we know is that presently she was in a situation that wasn't even good because she wasn't even married to the one she was with. And this woman, he goes on to teach her while worshipping God in spirit and in truth. And he reveals himself. If you know, the scripture said that no one knows the father except the one to whom the son reveals him and vice versa. So... Jesus answered, verse 26, I who speak to you am he. Why would he do that? How many people did Jesus tell that he was the Messiah? When he told his disciples in secret, he said, don't tell anybody. He told this woman. When he said, I know the Messiah is coming. He said, I am he. Mm -hmm. And then the woman left there and invited the rest and went on to talk about the reaper and the sower and all of that and the woman's testimony brought many to the lord jesus basically jesus made a, a divorcee extraordinaire his first samaritan evangelist in other words he gave her a calling this is not just a loose woman prostitute that has come to jesus this is one who has married and has done wondrous things. Does this imply Jesus accepted her? I thought she's living in rabbit sin. And she didn't try to go back and start marrying all the way back. Okay, let's go. Let me go back to the original Luga. My first husband married. He didn't go into any of that. Whatever the Lord did later with her life, all I know from that story is that he accepted her. And even gave her a calling. So what happens with those who say that people that have been through a divorce cannot be called by God? I don't think we are right I think we've done what the Lord says don't do. We've strained at a gnat and swallowed a camel. So what's the camel in this context? I'll use an illustration. 
restrained at pregnancy and a married girl getting pregnant and swallow a camel of fornication. It's okay to commit fornication, just don't get pregnant. Ridiculous. There's no sin of pregnancy, there's a sin of fornication. In the same way. Remember last time I, I, I said that the church has failed to do what it should do to help marriages in many, many ways to prepare people for marriage has failed to focus on what's important to to help vet people before they marry to help ensure that it's god that is joining them together hasn't but comes and strains at this this thing about how dare you think of leaving your spouse there's a spouse that's trying to kill the other spouse male or female causing harm you know very dangerous trying to poison even doing fetish things planning you know or the one who runs away packs and leaves the spouse husband or wife and you're going to say all we know is that you cannot remarry instead of focusing on hey you how dare you think of harming your spouse how dare you think of leaving your spouse how dare you instead of doing the primary thing the primary thing we ought to do with regards to marriages is ensure that they are joined together but pastors are teaching that you don't need to hear from God to marry anyone you pick is accepted these are the ways the church has relinquished its responsibilities swallowing the camels and then after that they strain at the nut um, so well you know you can't leave her you know you can never send him a, a, a high will stay away from him. you have so we we emphasize the less important and overemphasize the result. You ignore the seed. You spend all your time talking about the fruit instead of laying an axe to the root of the evil tree. But you had just said that breaking vows is a big deal. So do you not consider that the reason why the church goes after divorce so badly is because you're about to break a vow? You remember the thing Jesus said about putting heavy loads on people and not moving a tiny finger to help carry it? Yes. It stands. That's my answer to you. Everything I said about vows stands. Mm -hmm. It's the scriptures. It's not my opinion. You shouldn't break vows. But I have said you will be held accountable for helping them break the vows. Okay. For not stepping in. If you're going to play a fatherly role in someone's life, a spiritual role, why didn't you wade in and say, did you agree to marry that guy? No, 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 no. Come, come, come. No, no, you can't marry him. So this Gen Z, oh. A number of them will be in the lake of fire. <laughs> I, I, I don't think they'll be... I don't think when they walk up to the Lord, they'll say, we are Gen Z. So oh, let, all, let in all the Gen Z. There's space for them, too. <laughs> so you just lost some followers. <laughs> <laughs> if you stay to the end of the interview, you might get um, something. Don't leave yet. <laughs> Sir, this is Gen Z. I mean, we make our choices. We do our thing. We we have some sort of control. We know I, what we are doing. I don't know if it's a Gen Z thing. Divorces have been going on forever, so. But it's faster now. Maybe I'm I'm cut off from a lot of reality. But I do know just multiple generations are just the divorce rate is it's been really bad in the last maybe fifty years. It's bad, and yeah, it's maybe getting worse, like most things. The most important is not getting married. It's learning to not break vows and fearing God. Because no matter what, whether you're married or not, that's not the end of things. Yes. You, had, you had said earlier, it seems this is a long-term commitment. It's hard. Yeah, but no matter how long it is, you'll be 100 years. We have all of eternity to reap the consequences of what we did, which is why you should be able to endure even a bad marriage. Endure yes. it. However, if it's lethal, you know, one of the reasons why sexual immorality is a major reason the Lord said you may put them away. Has it occurred to you that likely because that's how you passed uh, sexually transmitted infections? Yeah. The Lord was trying to keep you alive? Yeah. So this is the question. In that story was the wife committing sexual immorality. What happens when you don't know she's committing? Like majority have no clue. Then how are you protected from the sexually transmitted infection? Hmm. You know, you needed to know to be able to put them away. What happens with the cheating spouse who's been cheating for 20 years and it's hidden? 
Hmm. So there's a need to even know before you can divorce. Now, doesn't that therefore mean that there are many people who are not divorced, but all the conditions for a divorce exist? Yeah. Uh -huh. Which yes. is why I said we should be quick to forgive. You should understand that Jesus was not saying once they commit sexual immorality, they must be divorced. Actually, he wasn't saying that. Mm -hmm. I mean, in this time, because of modern times, they're using contraceptives. contraceptives. They are preventing, they are using prevention from getting infections too. It's wrong to be immoral, to be unfaithful in marriage. You're being faithless. Remember, with God, it's not about the STD only. It's about breaking faith. Yes. Whether by putting away your wife. The Bible didn't say that they remarried in Malachi. Too. They just put her away. They made someone's life miserable. But we know that Israel made God's life miserable before he put her away. Mm -hmm. Causing one great misery and pain and hardship and sorrow is a source of trouble but why did jesus not give that as a basis for divorce why did he say except in the case of sexual immorality like i was saying in the last interview because god understood that there will be difficulties in marriage why did he say to the men in the book of first peter that they should not be bitter with their wives so their prayers will not be hindered in verse 7. Husbands, in the same way, treat your wives with consideration as a delicate vessel and with honor as fellow heirs of the gracious gift of life so that your prayers will not be hindered. You know where that's, that's from Malachi. Mm -hmm. Prayers being hindered. Okay? Prayers are hindered as Malachi pointed out. Let me read this. Colossians chapter 3, verse 19. Husbands, love your wives and do not be harsh with them some translation says don't be bitter against them mm. it can be from one side oh men can be harsher it can also be that because you do things that will make you want to treat her harshly yeah and as a married person i think the second one so, sometimes it can be you know men and women are different so sometimes women can think very differently from a man and sometimes we, the reason is because god put men in charge of family since there is a way the man's mind works now many men have broken faith have been unfaithful and unhusbandly and it's a well-known thing but it must also be stated you know, my challenge is that it's not stated even near to enough it must be stated that many times there are men who are leading very well and their wives are creating circumstances for them to be very bitter and to be harsh with them so much so that the bible puts it down try not to be harsh with them you know if i'm to complete the sentence i'll say because sometimes they have issues <laughs> sometimes they, they they do you know and any good wife and good wives say they open their mouths and say they acknowledge it say oh yeah you know i remember hearing the bimbo dukoya that used to speak about families many years ago before she passed upstairs um said that she had done things many times that husband ought to have beaten her up and that's you know, an honest lady really she she knows you know testing him extremely you know and being a being female well i don't think it's being female i think it's being um uh insufficiently godly <sighs> insufficiently like sarah because there are women that are not like that there's millions of women around the world that have been heard of who were so godly they turned their husbands to the lord in that first peter 3 talks about the same thing that let your husband be converted by your behavior that is men who didn't believe in god so, and many women have succeeded they were so in quote angelic they're so godly so god fearing that their husbands had to change that's how many women should be but many women are also not like that even when their husbands might be in my home church there was a woman who married an unbeliever. He didn't go to church. He gets drunk and beats her up. I don't know the reason why she married such a man. She's still very young and she ran away from him. Can she remarry after running away without proper divorce procedure? No, I don't think she should even dream of it. That would be a crime probably in heaven and on earth. So. <laughs> uh, she would need to divorce him. God has called her to peace if he's willing to stay in the marriage. We read this last in 1 Corinthians 7. Then she should stay. Can God change him? Yes. He gets drunk. And beats her up. Yes. 
if she, I wish there's a way she could plan and be locking herself in, <laughs> safe from him. I know it's risky. I've heard of these things. Heard of a man he, when he comes to himself, he'll cry and cry. He'll weep. He'll apologize. In other words, do you remember what I said about being under uh, a bondage? Helping people is not an easy thing. Hmm. On the spot, I'll ask for separation. Separation will be the first thing. But divorce, I wouldn't be quick to talk about divorce at all. I do not encourage divorce. That same couple can go on to become a wonderful, very happy couple. That man can become a Christian. We've heard these stories. When he's okay, if she will love God and be sincere and pray for him and get all the help she can, that man can be transformed. I know girls that were very loose and they are good wives. You know, we know every kind of person, male and female. We know men that were a certain way. They are no more that way. Mm -hmm. So I am very big on redemption. People can be redeemed. Just running off and she's still young. I mean, so it's not that long. So they could be separated. The same way she ran away. She can stay away and fight for her marriage. Remember, vows shouldn't be casually trust it comes with consequences when you break them uh, the feeling is that okay yeah but you are not keeping your part of the vow or this i didn't bargain i agree but first corinthians 7 the bible talks about spouses changing by reason of your behavior first first peter 3 to win him over if he won't listen to words you married an unbeliever that drinks and all that. You are that desperate to marry. Isn't that disobedience in your life? The Bible says you are to marry in the Lord. You didn't care about marrying in the Lord. You disobeyed God. So you were not faithful to God yourself. Now your spouse is not faithful to you. Hmm. Should God endure you? Do you hope he'll restore you and forgive you? Can you try to extend that to your spouse? How long may it last? I don't know. I have a relative who 14 years after the spouse had left and the person remarried, had other children. Then the spouse died. The wife of the man died. He came back to his senses later and remarried his original wife. They are married now. They have a happy marriage. These stories. <laughs> oh my God. You can give names and addresses. <laughs> Wow. Mm. Wow. So, it is possible. All sorts of things are possible. Wow. You know, the average self-centered person thinks that no, no one should go through pain. But like I said, in your business, do you go through pain? In schooling, do you go through pain? In work, do you go through pain? In, in, in whatever we engage with in this world, do people go through pain? Yes. Or do people sleep in their office? Do people stand under the rain? Oh yeah, in my marriage, you know, I slept in my office. I had to run and stay outside my office. My wife is a, a Jezebel. You are suffering in relation to one of the classrooms of life. In the army, do you go through pain? Were you ever under the rain? We have decided mm -hmm. that marriage is the one place where there should not be pain. We spent some time at the beginning bantering about that. I say that many of us say these things because we have not read, we do not know stories. We have not heard of people who became greatly used of God. I mean of God, who served God in ways you would look and wonder, wow, you must love God terribly to do that and those people were one some of them wife beaters husband haters sometimes some were di are divorcees all sorts of things and you couldn't question that they love god and god loves them because of what he does to them too yeah